Vanatu T zeros. Everyone thought Vanatu's next set was going to be bigger, bolder. No. Ha 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 ha. Smaller, bolder. Vanatu T ones were the first speakers sent to me as a reviewer. I had 8,000 subscribers. They had no reason to send me anything. I was a nobody. And I didn't even know how to film it. I'm pretty sure I, I ended up with a written review posted on Reddit somewhere. I still have the raw video footage taken at my cousin's place because I didn't have even a space. And those speakers are probably what started me here. Because it was like, how much? 500. Now, 500 back then was like, that's a lot of money. That's at least a summer job, for, you know, just doing shit work. But all of a sudden it became worthwhile because you get that taste of it. And it's like, wow, I've been listening to crap. So they sent it to me. I, I can't stop recommending the T1s. The only problem with the T1s was they weren't going to work for what they intended. They intended them to be put in a living room on pedals so next to a TV and easily hooked up. And the problem was that TVs use fiber optic and they didn't have it, or they didn't have a remote. Because what the hell good is a remote and without a TV in the living room, you gotta have a remote. So, t zeros their second product of all time. And this, I got an advanced, advanced pair, like the manual was like printed on a printer and stapled together to send to me. And it's time to talk about them, because they are hysterical. Just like the T1s, only instead of 500 a pair, 300 a pair. And smaller, like smaller, like, like who designs that? What, what is, what's even going on? Oh, passive radiators. So, do these replace the T1s? We'll talk about that at the end probably, but no, because that's a four inch driver and the T, T1s have a five and a quarter and a five and a quarter passive radiator, which is a four inch and a four inch passive radiator. That's this thing. And they design them, they design them always with passive radiators. And you know what? More speakers need to, because not enough do. They all switch to ports. Ports are cheaper and easier to tune. Those, my uh, Buchart S200s, passive radiators, they're no longer sold because they were too hard to make. But Vanatu doesn't care. Vanatu's doing their thing. Now, there's a lot to talk about with these. And is, is, how do they sound? I mean... Did I mute it? I muted this. They sound like Vanatus for less. They don't sound small. That's the number one thing. I reviewed, well, let's see, I'm probably going to have released the, um, the center ribbon, the Sunfire video with a six inch ribbon tweeter and the two side firing things and they need 700 watts to work and they were not good speakers. They just weren't. These are a fourth the price, self powered and sound like this. They are a self-powered pair, so on this speaker, you get what looks like a Cat5 plug. It's not. One of the faults and failings and problems and they couldn't get it done was they need, when you do a self-powered pair of speakers with the amp living in one side of it, you have to connect the left to the right. And <clears throat> when you're doing it good, you're doing by amping. And that means that this driver's got an amplifier, this driver's got an amplifier, this driver's got an amplifier, and this driver's got an amplifier. The problem is they're all living in that driver, in that speaker enclosure. So you need to get not positive or negative to the left like the original Vanatus. The original Vanatu T1s, there's still a physical crossover enabled inside of it. Inside of it is caps and coils and things, so it just sends signal to the left. 
Now they've gone to biamping, which means the DSP is doing full phase corrections and I'm sure immense amounts of things for this amplifier and this amplifier and the amplifier for that and that. So that means they have to send at minimum four connections over to the speaker. And it would make sense a Cat5 cable has eight wires and you send it over, but they need to send so much power because it's 48 watts per channel. So these are a hundred watt pair of three inch, four inch speakers. And they had to get a special 10 pin. I didn't even know they made this. What even is? Which uh, is pretty significantly long. And I love how there's just a random cable that's caught up, looped around. Like it's been there for yet for years. Get off of there. Oh, I hate you. This, this is what happened. This is karma. I'm sure I did something bad to someone to make that happen. So you get a relatively long, I think this is a 10 footer. Let's see how long was my arms. Yeah, it's about 10 feet. You get a 10 foot weird 10 pin category cable that goes from left to right. On their site, you can order shorter cables or longer cables. And shorter might be more convenient for a desk, but just, just curl it up. And longer might be more convenient for a living room, which is, guess what? Soundbar killers. Soundbar killers. L lots of killers. These are gonna kill lots of things. This is basically a, a snuff video that you're watching, because we're about to kill a lot of stuff. But uh, soundbars, again, need to die. So let's look at the actual build. You'll notice there's a handle on it. Did you notice there's handles? And you might say, well, see, those, those are probably not handles. Don't use them for that. But I, I just reread the manual and it says, if you want to go on vacation and you want to take these with you, you can use those as a handle. What those are actually for, though, is when you're on a desk, you sit it like this. So you get angling up at your face. You get the passive radiator shooting up. Usually on a real desk, you're against a wall and it would be hitting the wall and throwing back low end. But if you put it in a living room, you can do this which now makes the speaker stand perfectly straight. And if you don't like the Zeos look of tweeter on the bottom, let me get my grill back on for a second, which by the way, the neodymium magnets in the grill are the strongest I've ever come across. They just, you put the grill on, you can put it on its face. It actually comes with the Allen key. You can either remove the handle or the stand, however you want to call it all together, or switch it to the other side so that you could have it stand like that with the passive radiator on top. That's something they didn't need to do. This is no other speaker that I'm gonna ever review, at least in the next few years, I, I could imagine it's not gonna have like, well, you could take this part of it and detach it or take it and reverse it and stand it up and then you could turn the whole thing upside down. Like who's doing that? Also at the bottom here, you pull out this plug and there is a quarter inch stand mount. So you can wall mount these for you people who want to think about sound bar replacements. You pull this off with the provided tool and you get boom. It's actually almost pretty balanced there. Obviously front heavy and you can go left and right of your TV. It's going to stick out a bit and you can't crush the wire too bad, but back, back to things. This is the boring speaker. This is the this is the passive speaker. We need to talk about the interesting one. By the way, comes with Vanatu punched uh, stand material. Like put if you're putting on your desk, it comes with little pads. I don't need them for my desk because Zeos covers all his desks with quarter inch yoga mats, so he's already got this covered. Uh, the wires it comes with it comes with a power brick. There's a power brick here. What are we looking at? 24 volt, two and a half amp. And it actually comes with a very long actual power lead off the brick. Good if you're gonna use these in a living room. Again, I'm gonna keep saying living room. I'm gonna keep saying you don't need a sound bar anymore because these, 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 these. It has power brick, three and a half to RCA, a USB cable. I'm just using the one that I have permanently mounted. It's actually a pretty long one. And it's got a three and a half to three and a half for the auxiliary input. Now. Look at the back of this Kofifi. Kofifi. Do I want to disconnect things? Actually, it should. See, it's playing off the USB. Right now, my Windows 7 laptop through FUBAR 2000 
is using this as a sound device. It literally options output. This comes up in Windows as a sound device. So we're going to disconnect that. That'll probably throw an error. Yes, it will. Sorry, Ruby. And now we've got two other speaker, which is again that crazy 10 pin like Cat5, but not quite. Because they use, if you've got 10 pins, you've got to use four for the tweeter, which needs less power, which is two and two, positive and negative, and then six for the bass driver, or the mid bass, or the, the, the four inch. So you get to use three and three, carry more signal, more power. Power. Okay. We'll get to that blue LED and why it's okay. We'll get to it. We'll get to why blue LED is okay in this one. Because they, I think they heard my calls, and I don't know, God, just, oh God. Not a network, no network. I love how that's no network. This is warm, by the way, because the amp in this has been kicking ass for about 40 minutes on this desk, preparing for this review. You've got the DC in, you've got this other speaker in, you get a subwoofer out, We'll talk about subwoofer out and how this is better than all the subwoofer outs on other amps and things. Because you could actually change from either 125 hertz cutout or 80 hertz cutout. You get your optical in, your analog in, your USB in, a three-way switch labeled VTB, which is volume, treble, and bass. And then a pair program button and the fucking bluest blue LED you've ever blued. That you ever blew. On top, there's a volume knob or at least it looks just like a volume knob however it's got these one two and three dots around it and we're about to get into if we how do they sound zeos so i just want to know how they sound skip to like the end of this video because we're about to go on a journey you and i through the madness that is the end engineers of vanity and what they think you all need to deal with say goodbye to ruby everyone because we're about to bring up the manual for 20 minutes So it's got Bluetooth connectivity, right? That's why she's here. She's gonna connect to this in a second and start playing me music, fine. It's got USB connectivity, so computer, fine. Analog, so you could plug in just a three and a half millimeter, run it to any old player you want, cassette deck, vinyl, vinyl turntable, preamp, anything. And then optical, which lets you hook it up if you've just got motherboard audio and you just wanna have it out, probably just USB for a computer, but. Optical is more for your cable box probably has it out, your TV has it out. If you watch streaming Netflix, streaming Amazon Prime from your TV, if you have just a TV with TV speakers, please spend the money on these. I just want to I want to walk into someone's house in the next year. I'll give myself 365 days to change one person's life. I want to walk into someone's random house that I've met maybe twice and see a pair of these next to their TV and know that I've done good for the world. Because you just hook up your optical from your TV, which doesn't provide an optical. They're cheap. I'll link at Amazon Basics optical cable. And then you set your TV to use output and then this takes over and all your sound is now amazing and you use the volume control on the remote. We need to talk about things. We need to talk about speaker configuration settings and the remote control. Actually, we'll talk about the remote control first. Because it's a, it's a little simpler and it's sort of like a warm-up. So it's got lots of buttons. It's actually, I like the, it's very dirty for me touching it constantly. I, I like the, the bespoke nature of it. It says Vanatu. It doesn't look like they pulled it out of a parts bin and didn't make it for these speakers. There's only one button that doesn't do anything. The function one button, which they say is for future use, but I know what that means. That means you didn't have a, you couldn't figure out what to make that do right now. So, Auto, which sets this for the input stack, it'll, I, I'll have to find it in this thing, but basically, since it's got four inputs, analog, optical, USB, and Bluetooth, it will pick, if you hit auto, it'll automatically pick whichever one it thinks. I believe analog takes priority, and then USB, then Bluetooth, and then optical. I think that's how that goes, and I could be wrong, and you should all download the manual and just read through it. It's hysterical how much stuff this can do. Then you get to pick your individual. Here's your five inputs. Why are there five? Oh, what? Where's a coaxial? It's just coaxial. Did I miss something? Am I high? No. Oh, maybe the... Did I not read something? Hold on. I searched this for coax. 
coax. You know what? I'm not stopping this review. I'm, I'm too, too on the ball now. Here's your mute button, here's your volume button. This white circle indicates the advanced options. To touch any of these buttons with the speaker running does nothing until you hit the enable button. There's bass negative, bass positive, bass mid, which means reset. Treble negative, treble positive, treble mid, reset. Bluetooth pair, function one, which we already discussed, and the enable. So you, have, you hit that enable button, you have 15 seconds that these buttons will do things. And that's so when you just like mashing it when you're drunk, uh, you don't screw up the sound and all of a sudden these sounds terrible, return these. That's the remote. That's the simple part. Let's get to the complicated bullshit, holy God. So, scrolling back down to, not troubleshooting, that's too far, speaker configuration settings. Can I zoom this in? I really can't, I'll just read them to you. Basically, the X is here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, indicate the default settings of this speaker. But see, this is just a speaker, why would it need any other settings? Well, what if you wanted to switch these into mono? Just switch them so that they're, they're even though you're sending them stereo, it's converting it to mono. I don't know why you would need to do that, but you could do that. Enable sleep mode after 20 minutes. That is the default setting. Or you could change it to disable sleep mode so it never sleeps. How do you do that? Here's how you do that on this unit. Because it doesn't have a, if it had a, if it had a Bluetooth app, that was, this would be so much simpler. But we're, we're not there yet with Vanatu. So what we have to do to disable sleep mode so this unit never sleeps, put the volume knob on position one, which is all the way down, and then set this switch in the back, remember the volume treble bass switch? To disable sleep mode is bass, so all the way to the right. Then you hold the pair program button, then you plug it in, then you let go and it'll blink three times. You just told it to disable sleep mode. It's like Tomb Raider. Remember the original Tomb Raider where you had to turn a knob, then run across the river, and you light three torches and run back and turn that knob again, and then the torch in the middle would go out, and they all, oh, then you... It's like that. So, the next thing after sleep mode is enable, is remote enable key must be preceded to Bluetooth pair and all that stuff, or all that thing that I just talked about where you have to hit the enable key, you can disable that. You don't have to have it do that. And you do that by setting the you have to unplug it every time. You unplug the power, you set the volume knob where this tells you to set it, you hold that, you set the switch in the back to wherever it tells you to set it, you hold the program button, you plug it in, you let go, it blinks, and then it's set. The ones that I've dealt with on this, the ones that are important enough for me to talk about them are enable shelved DSP or flat DSP and limiters enabled, limiters disabled. The Cromwell, oh. God, mm. I need to finish Helsing OVA. These speakers currently are set up with the limiter is disabled, which by the way, makes my nipples so hard to just say that about anything. The limiters are, in, are disabled, sir. And the uh, shelved or flat DSP. Now they recommend with the shelled, the shelled DSP is how it comes. And that basically means it won't distort ever. You turn the volume up and up and up and it starts removing the things that will distort first, the bass and the low end. It's like, no, I'm not gonna let you do that. And it just, it twists the sound until it's, it's still good, but it's not gonna let you fuck it up. And when you have it in the default mode, when you plug a subwoofer into here, you can get the most volume out of it because you could turn the volume all the way up, it'll never distort, and it sends 125 hertz and below down to your subwoofer. If you disable the shelved DSP and put on the flat DSP, which they recommend for shelved DSP, they recommend for a desk. Flat DSP, they recommend if you're using these as studio monitors for professional mixing, or in a room where there's at least two feet of space around the speaker, like my living room where I had it set up, you put on the flat DSP. Which, by the way, flat DSP is dot to position three and on V, and then you do the, the, the power thing. 
and limiters disabled is halfway between dots two and three, and then having the switch on volume and then doing that. So right now, and it is persistent after you unplug it again, it's remembering that. You can reset everything in the factory by putting this, this on volume one position, putting that on volume, and just doing that and everything goes back to normal. Which I think, probably for the sake of this review, is going to be required, so... Oh god, was I on base? I was on base! What did that even do? Okay, let's try again. V, all the way down, hold button, plug in, blink, blink, blink. Alright, guess what? We just reset this back to factory. Which also, by the way, forgets her Bluetooth pairing, so we're gonna have to pair her again. I didn't say your name! Did I say your name? God damn it. Yeah, okay. You know that blue LED? You know that blue LED? And how annoying it is? Do you want to see why? If these speakers sucked, and I mean sounded like fucking gargling garbage, I'd still recommend them because of this. Are you ready? Are you fucking ready, people? Hold on the pair program button, right? Holding it down, holding it down for five seconds. And then after five seconds, keep holding it down and turn the volume knob from up to down. Oh my god. You could adjust the power LED brightness. You could shut it off entirely. I have to have no blue... This unit's now on with no power LED in the back. It's worth $300. Here, take my money. Take my money, please. Please take my money. You want to put that back on, you turn, obviously it's all the way down, so you turn it all the way down, you hold down, one, two, three, four, five. Keep holding it. Okay, we're going to give it like the smallest increment of blue. Here we go. So now I could just, because let me tell you, when you had this on bright, when it first showed up, but I hadn't read the book, the blue LED was so bright that behind one speaker, the wall was just a wash. And I was like, God, I wish there was a way to fix that. Then I actually read the manual, and I'm like, oh. If nothing else for that, I love you. So, we've reset it back to factory, other than the LED. I don't think the LED resets when you do that, but in case it does. Let's plug... Actually, you know what? We don't need to plug anything but the other speaker back in. Computer, we're going to leave disconnected for a second. Because, let's see if she's connected to Kofifi. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 3.55 p.m. Okay, so she's not Bluetooth to anything. Now, we could either hit the pair program button on this while being in Bluetooth mode, which, by the way, uh, there's your receiver and there's an indicator in front, which is not blue, it's orange. Thank you. So if I hit Bluetooth, she's in Bluetooth mode, but she's not paired anymore because I reset it. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to hit Enable. Bluetooth pair. Alexa, pair with Bluetooth. Searching. Bluetooth pair. Enable Bluetooth pair. Just making sure. Tavana to T0. Now that you're paired. Okay. So now, Alexa over there, play me some music. Resuming Spotify. If I had nothing to my name Alexa, pause. Of course, Chris Cornell is the last thing I had playing on Spotify through her. Now, this is basic. What, you're, what you've got here is how I've been using it the most. Because I've got her, and I don't want to say her name because she'll blink at me and then I'll have those judging eyes. I need a waifu stand that has her in the brain section. That'd be real weird. Basically, I've been able to put these speakers anywhere in my house, plug them into power, plug them into each other, and she will just Bluetooth to them, and she's got the internet, and I could ask her anything. I could, uh, Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.56 p.m. I don't want to ask her anything specific that'll give away grave details, like, how broke am I? Alexa, how broke am I? 
Only you know the true answer. Alexa, resume music. Rescued from the flame. So I'm gonna mute I'm gonna mute them directly. I wish those would blink to say it's muted. It needs to, to indicate it, because I might walk up to this in an hour and a half and not know what the hell's going on. So that's that's a little quirk. If you mute something, always have something like telling you it's muted. Okay, I'm muted. We went through that. We went through that. You can go read the manual. L limiters, limiters disabled sounds like a nipply fun good time where you're just diamonds. I've been able to clip the speakers though, because I'm an idiot. I would highly recommend leaving them enabled. You can play, look, like everyone gets to play. <clears throat> Once it clips, it doesn't have any source it's connected to. You gotta tell it to source again. So I was I was messing around and I was just like, all right, flat DSP instead of shelved. Right now it's on shelved, it still sounds amazing. But I'm in sort of a desk environment. I got a monitor behind it and I'm sort of in close. And close. Play around, you can play around with shelved DSP, which is the two position mid or three, read the goddamn instructions. It's not that hard, I just showed you how to do it. Play around with if you want shelved or flat. If I do the sound demo, I haven't done the sound demo yet, in the living room, I may try both and hook up the subwoofer so that you could hear what the difference is between 125 hertz cutoff of this and 80. Because that was one of my big problems with the T1, was when you plug the subwoofer in, it was like 125 hertz down to the subs, which the speakers just sounded anemic after that. So it's like, yeah, the subwoofer's taken over a lot, but it's too much. If I just want to add a subwoofer to these without it removing the character of the speakers, having it on flat EQ puts it only to 80, which is about normal. Limiters disabled though, uh, just the low end these speakers can throw, because now we're on sound. Remember when I said skip ahead? Here we are. The low end that these little baby speakers throw shakes the shit out of this desk. Are we going to go back? I need to get off of, of, of him. So let's see. It should just automatically... That should take over now. I should... If I hit auto and I start playing music, it should have automatically recognized and then I should be able to go... Will it figure it out? I don't know if it'll figure it out. Oh wait, I have it muted, don't I? Yes, see? It needs to blink. I didn't know it was muted. That's not even like up. So one of the other quirks, and they, it's really hard to get around it, is it's got a digital volume control here and it's got a physical volume knob there that's not digital. It's just, you set it to 50%, you're at 50%. So I can mute and I could lower it but if I go to touch the knob, it's immediately back to 50% because that's, it's, it's like, I'm at 50, no wait, you're not. 51, now I'm at 51, so it just instantly jumps back to that sound. It would be cool if they made it so that it sort of faded for a second. I'm sure whatever DSP they've got in here doing all this crazy shit could deal with that. If you don't wanna watch these reviews, by the way, just go watch the sound demo, I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. So what you're supposed to do is basically set this to where you're, you're probably going to leave it. 50% is good, by the way. It's loud. That's 50%. And then control it with this. It's a little weirder if you flip it upside down. If you do, if you give it one of these. Actually, I was contemplating trying this on camera. I don't know if I would recommend this. This is not. Because they are a little bit low. I mean, look, they are better than any computer speaker ever made by anyone. But what about the Clips Pro Medias? Throw them in the trash. These have the magics that I look for. The, the volume will jump. Also, if, if you press the volume once, two blinks. Two blinks. If you hold it, or if you press it a bunch of times, it'll just keep blinking after you've let go. It's sort of like it's locked into, oh, you want louder then, huh? Huh? And it just keeps going up and up. These are one pair of speakers I'd actually prefer them right side up. But see, now I've got 
Now the bass resonators are down, which is not doing as good a job because it's, it's, it's smashing into a thing. So it would be at this point we would take out the little Allen key that they provided and disconnect the things, turn these right side up and have them straight up vertical, do good things, great go. Uh, we could actually do this. That isn't illegal. This is perfectly legal, what I'm doing now. Okay. Because I, you know, you want you want to hear the you want to slouch if you have to and hear the imaging coming from in front of you. Obviously, this isn't my gaming computer. Look at the uh, the swans just up on a top a six inch lift because that's where they need to be, and those are angled back too. And those are amazing speakers for different reasons than this. This is a technology fucking blunderbuss. Just pfft. okay. Room correction. Boom. Oh, so if you want to change the bass and treble, obviously it's it's easy on the remote. Can we agree that that's going to probably be... Enable, treble, 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 treble. Oh, it will not, you can't hold bass and treble to adjust the bass and treble. You have to press it. Every time is one decibel. Alexa, pause. It detected no signal from my USB and said, wait, this is still throwing me signal, and switched back to Bluetooth. It was pretty good. If I had analog and fiber optic, we could really give this a test. I don't care if this is a 40 minute review, you need to know about these. And I've had them for so long, I feel like I sort of, they've sort of earned like an hour long spot on this channel, even though no one's gonna go to the end and no one's gonna buy them, because like, I'm not watching a fucking hour long video, fuck that. But um, where were we? Damn it, oh yeah, adjusting bass and treble. So. You hit enable, gives you 15 seconds to play with the buttons, unless you disable that, the thing, because you can. So I could reset treble, reset bass, fine. If you want to do it without the remote, what you got to do is you got to go back to that switch that we were looking at before, the VTB switch. And right now it's on volume, and that's obviously what this does. If you switch it to treble or T, you turn, you start in the middle and you go, Treble, and you press the program button, the screen door slams, and now it's locked. And you go to you go back to the middle. You go to bass. Like a vision, she dances. You lower that all the way. The you press the program button, and back to volume. So right now the speakers are set: treble maximum, bass minimum, and back to volume. So it's locked. It's locked on that. And there's a way to reset it which I can't remember at this point. I, uh, I'm just gonna do it with the remote. Because that's a whole lot easier. These speakers are basically set up good enough that you don't have to touch them once you get them. I mean, if you're, if you're adding bass to these, you're a sicko, and if you're adding treble, then you're a freak. I don't care if you're a sicko freak, they sound great. Do whatever you, it's almost impossible to make these not sound like the best $300 speakers I've ever heard. No matter what I do to them, no matter what I play through them. Even Bruce sounds good. I'm waiting for the hate mail in the comments now. Way out there beyond this hate town, Barnaby. There's a slick town, Barnaby. By the way, that song starts with my hometown. So go look that up and tell me what my hometown is in the description or in the comments. <laughs> That's weird. That's a weird one. Oh, I had a Batman track playing from uh, Batman Begins or Be and just the low end. Let me get to some low end. Do I have my low end demo here? Best bass. I still have my best bass tracks. Mind of the Free from Juno Reactor. Or Yoshi Hirokawa's interlude. By the way, in case you don't know how passive radiators work, instead of a port, see what a port does is when that speaker goes in and out, it's trying to compress the air inside the box. And a sealed speaker like a Dayton B652 or the uh, PSA MT110s 
will just squeeze the box as hard as it can and then it comes out and it's sort of uh, but there's no like it's a it's a smaller tighter movement which can be good it could limit the speaker from doing crazy things but if you want low end you've got to put a hole in the box so it could squeeze the air and then some leaks out faster than the actual thing and then it sucks it in and so it, it breathes with a passive radiator the problem with the, with the port is a you're moving air in and out which means chuffing sounds can happen unless you have a fully realized flat port and then you're aiming it somewhere and it's it's doing it can always do weird things the passive radiator is weight controlled so that's basically a speaker just like the one on the front only there's no magnet it's just moving from the air and it's getting compressed and then it's reacting to that. And this is weighted very, very specifically to move at the right speed to handle what's going on. So they've done a lot of research into it. I would highly recommend you leave that aspect alone. The whole desk is moving. That's, how do I even show that? You can't see it. You just have to believe me. Mmm. Water is good. So. They image better than just about anything I put on a desk. Like, just fucking that one inch. That, that one inch is just doing exactly the same thing as its Vanity T1 is doing. The low end is bizarre for the size. And it's not like they turned it up to 11. I don't know what they've done, but it's just shaking the hell out of everything I've got. When I do the sound demo, again, probably in the living room. Probably over Bluetooth? Do I dare? No. No, I mean, I could, but... That's, I think that's my keys actually shaking. Hold on. Yeah, I thought that was the speakers distorting for a second. No, no, no. That's all the keys on my keyboard shaking. Okay, so that's... If you ain't sold on the low end of these speakers by now. Done demos. These are, these are songs that will not get my shit pulled. So depthy. I, a lot of it, I think, has to do with that passive radiator on top is shooting backwards. And even though there's not much to hit there, I could still detect that there's shooting sound in an omni almost directional way. At least the mid frequencies, because obviously the tweeter is not doing, you know, a thousand hertz. That is. And it's going back and forth. And oh, yes. I, I don't know what else. I mean, are we, are we? Are you asking me LSR three hundred fives or these? Is that is that what everyone's been waiting 34, 34 minutes? I'm gonna call it right now. I don't know the timestamp. Thirty four minutes from from the beginning of this video. You want to know LSR three hundred fives or these? These are more impressive. Impressive. Those honestly, if you said which one does more bass, I don't remember the three hundred fives being like monsters. These are not designed to be studio monitors, but people use them as such because they go so low. I don't even know what the frequency response is. I remember the original Vanity's claimed 41. Can I look that up real quick? Is there a specs? Where are you? Come on. I should have... This is one of those things I should have just known. 48, six and a half watts, 48 bits, 14 pound shipping, idle power, you're not gonna tell me. It's just not gonna tell me. Someone figure it out, post in the comments, you'll get upvoted, I'm sure. Yeah, no, yeah, where's their webpage? Where's the, where's, where's the estimate on there? The guides, products, they literally, this is it. It's the transparent zeros or different types of Bluetooth transparent ones. That's the newest thing. They got a new pair of transparent ones with Bluetooth. So 
Where's the specs? Specifications. Eighth order DSP derived Butterworth high pass at 58 hertz. What? These are words I don't understand. Oh, they claim 56 hertz in shelf mode and 52 hertz in flat mode. So it'll go even lower in flat mode. Oh, God. Buy them, take them out of the box, plug them in, either hook them up to Bluetooth or hook them up USB or hook them up analog or hook them up to your TV with a spitif and don't touch anything. You shut that blue LED off. It's worth it just to go, fuck you, fuck you, and not have a little LED. But I mean, shelved DSP versus, I, I enjoy it either way, honestly. And if you're going to get a subwoofer, then I would switch over to the flat DSP. I don't want to this, please. Four volts. Hmm, can I make a boom box out of these? Battery power these and take them to the beach. Because they're sealed. You get sand in your tweeter. Alright. Look. I've gone over what they do. I've gone over how much I love them. And you're going to hear how they sound in the sound demo in the description. Links to buy them in the description. Link to the Ruby wallpaper in the description. Patreon link in the upper right hand corner in case they decide to stop sending me things to review. And then, by the way, these are going back, which is unfortunate as fuck. I don't need them anywhere, but I want them everywhere. Patreon link in the upper right-hand corner to support this terrible, terrible channel where I do nasty, disgusting things to audio equipment that you can't ever know about. Unless you're on Patreon, then I might talk about it. But, um, yeah, I, I have to stop this 40-minute video because I just, I can't go over how amazing they are enough to make it even worth continuing. And I kind of like them without the grills on. I can actually feel the weight of the magnets. Until next time, with the T negative ones where they're like this big.